little pup named Kicker Dog came into my life after I almost lost it all. Watch as we take this badass adventure van on the road trip of a lifetime. There were highs and there were lows. We pushed our limits, learned a lot, and met some incredible people along the way. But above all else, we had fun. Welcome to season two of the Tiny Home Adventure. So I just had to leave uh, Kicker with my buddy John. So yeah, pretty, see man, thank you. Pretty hard actually. Um, first time being away from him and yeah, it's a, a pretty big bummer after um, losing Booter and all that, so. Uh, yeah, it'll be hard. John's a super good guy, somebody I trust, so he'll be okay with him. Um, so, on to some big ass mountains. Should be good. I met up with photographer Lindsay Dolan, who I would be flying in with. So, this is my hunter. Base camping right below. Denali, so I'll be able to see the West Redwood Mount Forker and Mount Hunter. It's gonna be wild. We packed up our gear and got ready to fly out. We flew with Sheldon Air Service in a small bush plane designed to land on glaciers. This was definitely a first for me. After we landed, we quickly unloaded the gear. Time for a second load. This was hands down the most beautiful and powerful place I have ever been. Just after setting up our tent, I heard a rumble and looked across the valley to see the largest avalanche I could ever imagine. Base camp was primarily full of mountaineers looking to climb Denali and some of the surrounding mountains and technical routes. I was psyched to find a group of people working on their crevasse travel and rescue techniques. He is ready to be on belay. <laughs> Down climbing deep into the crevasse was an unnerving feeling to say the least, but incredibly unique and beautiful. This is the clearest ice I've ever seen and probably millions of years old. The end of the rope here. Whoa. One of the techniques used to escape crevasses is to ascend the rope using two prussics. Prussics are self-tightening knots that will allow you to climb the rope using the right technique. It is not easy with snow gear. Another technique is some good old fashioned ice climbing. This was a good test using my snowboard boots with some snowboard boot crampons. Pretty good. After an awesome day, we settled in. First night in Alaska, and we woke up to <laughs> When the weather is bad, there's not much else to do, but make some warm water and hunker down in your tent for a while. Two-person tent, 
four-person dance party. Yeah. Eventually, the crew rallied and we set up a better shelter for some community cooking. The storm let up just enough for us to try some snow surfing. Next morning, the storm had completely cleared out, so we set off on our first mission. Henry, Julian, and Lindsay filmed the line on the left, and I rode the one on the right. I met up with one of my idols, Zach Clanton. We decided to go check out this zone called Control Tower. The wind at higher elevation was ripping. With massive overhanging cornices, we decided that the risk was unmanageable and that we would both prefer to live to ride another day. So we took a mellow line home and got a few photos. After returning to camp, we noticed some commotion from one of the mountaineers' camps. So we ran down to investigate. <laughs> Apparently, Joda and T. Powell had been kicked off the line for the third day in a row due to weather. And when they got back to camp, the weather had let up and they would have been able to finish the route. So they decided to get whiskey drunk and kick the shit out of each other in frustration. We gotta sin! We're just gonna waste our life for the next two getting hammered and fighting. I'm climbing on through the storms, I don't care. Windy, wide out. This was like three or four meters. And when you're climbing up, you can kind of like tap in front of you and feel the slope and keep climbing. But when you're going down, you can't do that. And you can just walk up a cliff. Whipped it and it hit me right in the face and took me out and I fell down. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a frisbee. Once things settled down, Joda walked me through their gear for bigger missions. 
These are yeah. 32 degree bags. Yeah, too. It's supposed to be like negative 30. And this is essentially like your two person divvy sack. Yeah, yeah, that's the setup. All three of those are like less than three pounds. It is totally crazy how rugged these dudes are. Yeah, Welcome to the mountains, wow. motherfuckers. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> the whiskey battle, not the ski. Don't throw that at me, no. Yo, pitch the whiskey. <laughs> 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 I need to do it. Oh, oh, oh. Holy shit. Vibrant swirls of color danced into deep space as we set yeah. into the night. This was my first time seeing the Aurora Borealis and it totally blew away my expectations. The next morning we had ideal weather, so we set off for a line called Cat Ears. Little did I know this would be the highest consequence line of my life. We had to cross some crazy snow bridges over crevasses. Not a bad place for a selfie. This is where things got spicy. After riding the pow field above, we decided to see if we could drop into this insanely exposed face. Riddled with rocks and sheet ice, with a massive crevasse below, this is the definition of a no-fall zone. And this is where I fall. I fell airing the Bergtrund, but was able to recover quickly before tomahawking to my death. But I definitely needed to change my underwear. The thing about being this far north this time of year is that the sun barely sets, which makes for an epically long sunset. The next day, Cody Booth flew in. I asked if he'd be down to ride the spine wall just below camp. After little convincing, we made our way to this impressive and massively steep wall, which would in turn be the best line of my entire Alaskan experience. Worst places to hang out. That's your base camp. Waiting for the lights to come in. Yeah, dude. And... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alaska has been humbling yeah. to say the least. I was so stoked to finally <laughs> ride a line to the best of my ability. Yo, what this guy told there? me tomahawks weren't that bad. A few hours later, Joda decided to ride another line off the spine wall and ended up getting caught in his slough and tomahawking down the face, breaking his arm. Quickly, everyone sprang into action, splinted his arm, and organized the flight out. Everyone was super thankful that he was okay. We got a forecast of a five day storm on the way. So I caught the next flight out as my food was running low and I was so ready to see Kicker Dog. This trip has literally been a dream come true. I've dreamt of coming to Alaska since I was 12 years old. It was beyond humbling in so many ways, but the experiences, the lines we rode, and the people I met will be something I remember for the rest of my life. I am so excited to get back into town 
get into some shorts and hang out with Kicker Dog. <laughs> so much for the love and support if you'd like to keep up with our latest endeavors follow us on instagram at andrew underscore underscore muse 